Hello everyone, so I'm Amos Hironi. I'm uh, leading the machine learning team at Prophecy. Uh, today we'll talk a bit about uh, our work and also the future direction that we think uh, machine learning from events should, uh, should take. So to understand the future of uh, machine learning from events, we'll start by looking at the evolution of uh, the event-based sensor before talking about uh, also the state of the art. So if we look at uh, the evolution of uh, prophecy pixel, we see that the size of the pixel is constantly going down. And uh, in our uh, last generation sensor, um, to the best of our knowledge, it is the uh, smallest existing uh, event based pixel. And thanks to this uh, reduction of resolution, we can increase the size. Uh, and the, uh, thanks to the reduction of the dimension of the pixel, we can increase the resolution uh, of the sensor. So on the sensor side, we also passed from a custom interface to a standard one, which will allow easier integration with uh, other industrial uh, frameworks. And we also put directly some uh, event signal processing in the sensor. And this is something that we'll see more and more. Okay. So this is the kind of output that we get from uh, our sensor. So we mounted the camera on a car and we drove around. So this is the raw output of the camera without any post-processing. And we can see that thanks to the high resolution, we can really see a great level of details, both uh, temporally, really smooth, uh, uh, smooth trajectory, all the details, for example, on the roads, uh, yeah, on, the, on the background, we can see the mountains, and so on. So this has been recording with a large field of view, uh, 110 degree uh, S-mount uh, lens. What's the flashing? Uh, it's the, the light, because, the, uh, because of depending on the, on the orientation of the camera, you might have some uh, reflection of the light on the street. So our, what, uh, what are the applications and uh, how do we process the can, this kind of data? So one classical uh, event-based problem is uh, learning, so trying to find the optical flow from, uh, from the events. So here we build upon the work of Zoo that we saw also today, uh, Event FlowNet. But here we show that actually since the events uh, really encode naturally the dynamics, it's much easier compared to frame-based uh, vision to learn the optical flow. And here we can reduce the number of parameters almost 10 times compared to uh, similar uh, frame-based architectures. And this runs uh, at 50 Hertz on a VGA sensor on, on a laptop uh, GPU. Uh, yeah, so so on, on the right uh, is the, the output of the VGA sensor, and on the left is the optical flow direction encoded uh, with, uh, with colors, so object moving to the right are in blue, and the object moving to the left are in red. And again, thanks to the higher resolution, we can really see uh, find, find details of, uh, of the details. And here we arrive at the stop. Yeah, we can see that. All right, okay. So another work that <coughs> we are doing is trying to learn uh, feature points from an uh, event stream. So here we train uh, a detector to class classify corners in event stream. This runs uh, event by event and it's real time on uh, HVGA sensor. And thanks, so the advantage of using a learning approach in this case is that we can learn a representation which is invariant to the movement of the camera because of course the appearance of the corner in an event based camera depends on the motion. Um, and, but learning directly from the data, we, we can, uh, can be ro robust to really fast change of direction. And, uh, and we also made the, the data set available for, uh, uh, so please uh, take, take uh, check it out. And if you have more questions, come, we can come to our poster session during the main conference. Okay. And finally, a classical uh, machine learning problem for vision is uh, object detection. So here we train uh, a network to detect uh, cars and pedestrians. 
in event stream. You can see we, we are stable also when we stop, uh, and there are few fewer events. And uh, so this is also really a small network, can run 50 hertz on VGA sensor on, on a mobile, uh, mobile phone. So how do we obtain this kind of results? So today in the state of the art, there are two main uh, uh, approaches. So the first, which I will call the dense approach, consists in taking the input events and building some dense representation, like for example, histograms and type surfaces and so on, and then applying some standard, uh, standard architecture. So this works uh, well in practice, and uh, the main reason is that you can leverage all the existing frame base algorithm and GPUs and, and so on. Uh, the drawback is that you lose some of the advantages of the event based sensor, in particular power consumption and, uh, and latency. So a complementary approach is a sparse approach in which you update your network only when you have meaning meaningful information coming uh, from, uh, from, the, from the scene. And these really have the potential to fully exploit all the characteristics of the event-based sensor. So really low latency and low computation. Uh, today, the, the, these models are still a bit limited in, uh, in size and uh, mainly because the, you need uh, some dedicated uh, chip to really fully uh, uh, exploit the sparsity. And uh, typically they, these chips uh, allow only low resolution input. But still, the progress that, uh, that we see, uh, also the results that we saw today, are really, uh, really impressive on uh, both, both uh, sides, <laughs> both approaches. And it's also even more impressive if you consider that even based vision, it's really a uh, recent field of, uh, of research. And for example, the silicon rating paper appeared in 1991, a modern even based sensor a few, few years later. And there is a huge gap compared to frame-based vision that, uh, of course, we need, uh, we need to fill. But uh, from all this past research in frame-based vision, we can also learn some, uh, something. And, uh, and uh, this will help us finding the best, the future direction for, uh, for our methods. So if we look at what made the success of modern uh, artificial intelligence is the combination of three things. So good learning algorithms, running really fast on some dedicated uh, hardware, and trained on huge amount of data. So we think that even based uh, uh, machine learning should move in the same direction, but uh, faster, of course. So let's start by taking a look, uh, look on the algorithm side. So uh, the architectures that are used today in uh, frame-based vision are an old idea. So CNNs were trained in the, in the 80s already. And uh, while there are many propositions for event-based uh, uh, architectures and models, it's not clear yet what, what is the best way to learn from event-based data. Uh, but one thing that uh, we think it's, uh, it's important is that these, these new models and, uh, and architectures should really focus on some characteristics that are specific to the sensor. Because if you want to really not only be as good as frame-based vision, but also uh, have an added value compared to it, so you, you should focus on something that frame-based sensor cannot uh, provide. And another important component that these uh, event-based models will have is that they will learn with some kind of memory, memory mechanism. And to explain you why this uh, this is important. Let's look at this, uh, this video. So again, when, as, as long as we move, we see all, very well all the tails and the object in the scene. But when we stop, we don't have events anymore. So if we want to maintain a state of the, of the scene around you, of course, you have to, to remember somehow uh, this uh, past information. And of course, the information is there. As we saw today, you can easily reconstruct the gray level image. But it's more efficient if you include this memory directly in the, in the model. So now let's consider uh, the hardware side. So as I said before, CNNs are an old idea, but they can, could only scale when, after the introduction of modern GPUs. And also here in uh, event-based vision, there are many uh, available chips and neuromorphic chips 
to process event-based data. And uh, so this is a really important uh, part of, uh, of research for event-based, and we should continue working, working on that. And now we will try to explain with a simple example why we cannot continue to process event-based data on a classical von Neumann, von Neumann archi architecture. So let's do one of the simplest things you can do with events. Uh, let's build uh, an histogram. So for each pixel, you count the number of events that you receive in a, in a certain amount of time. And we fix the number of events. So the computation should be it's constant. And it's actually really small because it's a simple operation. But we change the resolution of the histogram. So we change the resolution of our sensor. And what we see is that actually the time you spend to build the histogram, it's constantly increasing. And what this diagram shows is that actually what you are doing is just spending your time bringing memory close to the computational units. So in other words, you are paying more and more cache misses. So and this is why in the future, uh, neuromorphic uh, architectures, uh, memory and computation should be really closely interlaced. And uh, so after the silicon retina, we will need a silicon uh, visual cortex. So finally, the last uh, component for uh, modern AI is the large data sets. So here, every year, we see better and better and larger data sets for even base vision. But the size of this data set is still uh, small compared to, uh, to the frame-based counterpart. For example, if you consider a problem of object uh, classification, we see that the largest event-based uh, data set are a few tens of thousands of samples, while ImageNet is uh, 14 million. So in this uh, prophecies is also you know, contributing to, to releasing new data set. And for example, last year at CVPR, we released the data set for uh, car classification. This year, with uh, our work on corner detection, we released the uh, HVGI data set. And uh, by the end of the year, we will also release a first large-scale large detection data set for event-based data. So this will contain more than 10 hours of recordings from driving scenarios with uh, more than 170,000 bounding boxes of cars uh, and pedestrians. So we think that in only this way we can really improve and, uh, uh, and accelerate the, the performance of even event-based systems. Okay, so to conclude, we saw that the resolution of the event-based sensor is, uh, co is constantly increasing, that this data sh will be processed on some dedicated hardware, and that memory will be a com fundamental component uh, in, on it. And that validation will be, and training will be done on, on large data sets. Okay, so Prophecy will also be at the main conference, so please come and visit us at our booth or at, and at our poster session. Thank you. <laughs>